The holidays are upon us, and I think that's a fantastic time to get yourself some Bricky merchandise. All the way down there at Orchidate.com, link in the description. We got merch, all kinds of stuff. The My Beloved collection, the Little Guys collection, this little Brickle, this little guy, this little, little Brickle man, he's available. He's also available in a hoodie if you just really want that, but even a zip up, you know, you can get him. He's awesome, he's fun, and I got a discount for you. If you use the promo code V, just V, just the letter V, you will get 15% off your entire order, no matter what you order. Shirts, hoodies, our awesome uh, Music of the Third trading card game, mat, dice, doesn't matter what it is, 15% off, code V. And that will make more sense when we get into the video. So, orchidate.com, code V, that will last for a couple of weeks, so get it while you can. Boom, but we don't actually see him die. Now, obviously, if you look at the tank, Many people have informed me that you don't survive when the tank goes like that. It'll absolutely kill you. But hey, when it comes to media, no body, no kill. Shadow himself. Welcome, Graves. Heard you died in a tank in South America. Well, I wasn't in that tank. A couple of years ago, video game content on YouTube was awash with rage videos. Negativity in the gaming space was not only prevalent, but also one of the best ways to make money on the platform. Why bother talking about a successful indie darling when you could get triple the views making your sixth video on why Fallout 76 is a terrible video game that shit in a public urinal? I've always rejected the idea of high volumes of negativity in my content. I intentionally choose to discuss games I love because I find it more fun and it simply makes me happier. When I have hopped into making a negative review, it's almost disheartening how well it ends up doing. And I say this because in my Modern Warfare 2 to 2022 review, I called it Bigger, Louder, Stranger, and Dumber, but I didn't call it bad. The title of this video is most likely something along the lines of, this is the worst Call of Duty campaign of all time. It kicked my dog and pissed in my milkshake. Besides the last part, that is not hyperbole. That is not clickbait. That is not just submitting myself to negative gaming news space to get all the views. That title, besides the last part, I drink your milkshake, is 100% my real opinion. Modern Warfare 3 to 2023, you had to ruin it, is the worst campaign COD has ever had, and it is a genuine new low for the franchise in general. You might be rolling your eyes at me saying, of course it's terrible, COD has been creatively bankrupt for years, and you're right, but it has still shown glimpses of promise, still shown redeeming qualities no matter how small over the years. This game is a failure at every single level. It has reached a new low that has surpassed my already extremely dire expectations. And it goes something like this. The opening of Modern Warfare 3 is actually one of its strongest points. It starts off much like a combo of the sub base and gulag missions in Modern Warfare 2, where the mission is titled Operation 627. Those familiar with the original trilogy know that Prisoner 627 was a twist revealed to be a once thought dead Captain Price in the original Modern Warfare 2. So initially you're thinking that Price might be here again, captured for whatever reason. But the mission itself is probably the best one in the game, or darn close. Trust me, it, it's only down from here. It's a solid linear section with some fun action moments, repelling gameplay all the while, you not really knowing who you are or what you're doing. It's a classic Call of Duty mission, it's through and through. And the twist is that you are actually rescuing Ben Shapiro from his stay in his beach home with Aquaman. Sell the houses to who fucking ass! This is a pretty fun little segment. You get that, that little twist, you realize you're playing is the bad guys. The mission's tight. The gameplay is it's kind of boring. It's a tutorial mission, so it's not particularly exciting, but it's still something. So Ben Shapiro, it, he, why, he looks so much like Ben Shapiro. I don't know why Makarov looks so much like him. We have to talk about your imminent death. You're gonna die at some point here. I'm coming for you, you idiot. You, you get him out of prison and the mission ends. You cut over to Task Force 141, which realize this is the case. They got him out of prison. They turn their asses around and then we immediately cut again to Farah and her old friend that she will spend a lot of time with. <laughs> and now this 
this is where the good missions die. What Modern Warfare 3 gave us is an open concept to missions with area objectives. If you're seeing the background for this gameplay, you're probably thinking to yourself, by golly, Bricky, that sure as hell looks a lot like Warzone. That's a pretty keen eye you got there, because that's basically what it is. Almost every single major mission in the campaign is a reused Warzone area with a few side objectives. Let me repeat that. Almost every single mission in the campaign is a reused war zone area with side objectives. It's the spec ops mode in the original games reutilized for campaign missions and a quarter as fun. There is a huge reliance on stealthing these missions, or at least they keep trying to tell you to stealth them. Can I run? They see me, cover's blown. All right, I guess I can't sprint. I didn't stealth a single mission I didn't have to in this game because I didn't want to, and I didn't have to. I played this whole thing on regular difficulty because after the wave upon wave of armored enemies pretending like that's a good way to do challenge in MW2 to 2022, I just didn't want to have to deal with that again. So I never stealthed. I ran through every gigantic war zone field and killed everyone I saw and died almost not at all, which is a crazy backdrop to what we have narratively because considering what this mission actually is which is farah working with graves and alex this is gonna come at quite the whiplash for some of you playing the game because you'll remember graves dying in modern warfare 2 and even more so you'll remember alex dying in modern warfare 1. well that scene at the beginning of this video that isn't even modern warfare 3. this is the scene when they realize Graves is alive. I got a lead on Makarov's bankroll. We're not looking for money. So you find the money, you find the man. Where are you getting into? Without an army, you got nothing. Wrong again, boys. Unfucking believable. So, you missed me? Well, technically, you did, didn't you? You know when that scene arrives? Two hours from this mission. That cutscene I showed you earlier in the video, that is from a, a, a Warzone seasonal update cutscene during the lifetime of Modern Warfare 2 2022. Alex from Modern Warfare 2019 has also apparently survived and has a prosthetic leg also revealed to us in a Warzone update. So if you bought Modern Warfare 3 and only played the campaign, campaign of the second game, you are just, just uh, randomly hit with both a living Alex and Graves with zero explanation. And to make it even worse, they're working with Farah. She's one of the few decent moral compasses in this series, and she's working with the guy who went door to door murdering a South American town? It's a little sus. But it, it's not like it really matters because once you do the Warzone style mission, you literally just put trackers on missile trucks from Shadow Company because those missiles have been taken by the private military working for Makarov called Kony 2012, a group whose logo is totally not inspired by the real life Wagner PMC, not at all. So you finish this mission and you get Ben Shapiro cutscene as well and you meet his sister. <laughs> Listen, it was hilarious that Makarov looks so much like him already, but the sister character also looking so much like Ben Shapiro's sister is sending me. This cutscene is just, it's really bad for a lot of reasons. It's supposed to show Makarov's evil villain side because they killed some guy who didn't have enough faith in the cause or whatever, but they do it really weird for so many ways. Like it's paced terribly. The whole scene just goes too quick, cuts too often, and just, it has a bad narrative flow. Y you can't help but notice the horrid gun safety here? I took a few firearm classes and I remember specifically, it's be mindful of what's between your target and what's beyond your target. That's the thing to be really important about before you shoot. So this guy gets shot from people on the right, but there's an entire group of guys surrounding him on the left. Like if he just ducked or flinched or something, oh, another random guy would have gotten domed. My God, mind your surroundings. And three, I don't speak Russian, but every single person on stream told me their Russian in game is abysmally bad, like just horrible. And, and the more I listen to it, the more it sounds strange to me. Milena. Vladimir. 
Even as a non-Russian speaker, I still feel like I can pick up on weird inconsistencies in how they speak. Kind of like the uncanny valley of language, which doesn't help either because I can't get over the Shapiro family being in a COD game. Nobody cares, like nobody cares. You really should move on with your life. So anyway, the next mission is you taking out Coney helicopters with missiles. Uh, and this is at an abandoned nuclear power plant, so you obviously don't want Makarov getting nuclear missiles. Unfortunately, it's another war zone mission. You run in, you see four helicopters, and then you go into a reactor where you see Makarov is using chemical warfare missiles, because it can't be an MW3 game without chemical warfare. The mission ends, Price is evac into a helicopter, and the whole next scene is just really weird. Come. Cap! Stay with us, sir! Six dudes to watch out, we need medevac now! Morning, sir. Take it easy, Cap. <laughs> You beat the gas, but he still needs some time to recover. It's such a narratively confusing part. You know, in a story, if you want to do the, oh God, is this character going to die thing, you tend to stretch that out a little bit. You stretch the question. The way it's cut feels like there was supposed to be an entire mission between these two moments. He blacks out, you go do some other campaign mission somewhere else, and then he comes to the next cutscene because you have to stretch that emotional uncertainty, but he's just up immediately to the point where you wonder why this was even left in. Not just that, but he's right back to being up and in fighting strength with Farah again in the next mission, still unaware of Graves being alive, by the way, and you're off to go do another war zone mission. And also, can I just say, these subtitles are really early. The whole scene, they're like four seconds early, half the time. It's super weird. Watch. Stand by. For fuck's sake, Farah. The next mission is Price sniping and taking out some enemies, and it's it's the same thing you've done every other mission. It's painfully dull. And this is where, even on a regular, they start shoving tons of armored enemies at you. I can't stress how abysmally horrid this game would be if this gunplay wasn't decent. Like, if it wasn't on the new IW9 engine and had just such good-looking guns and firing effects, it would be like watching paint dry. If this game did not have guns that shoot this nicely and look this good, this is like a Redfall level of a failure, but it still has that going for it. So at least the shooting part is good, even if it lacks any good gameplay variety. Oh, right. This next segment might be the funniest in the whole game. So the missiles you get to bear the symbol of the Urzikstan, you know, the fake Middle Eastern country, flag on it. They have the flag on it. So it's another false flag operation where the fear is that people will think Urzikstan did this because they put the flags on the missiles again. My missiles, my flags, my country. Who wants the world to think you did this? Take a look at this. Hassan's got missiles. They're American. They reuse the same flag planted on plot point they did in the last one, and you have to disarm it, right? So you disarm one, but then two more with chemical weapons take off, and, and Price does this. Laswell, are you there? This is six in the blind. We have two missiles incoming to the Arklov base. They have chemical warheads. If you are there, get out now. So he warns Laswell, in which you then play a small segment of Laswell sneaking into a base, getting a key card, and then talking to Yuri, because we have to have Yuri here. And by the way, despite him being a major character in Modern Warfare 3 in the original, this is the only scene, like a, a three minute cutscene segment. But, but, then we get this. Bravo, your signal's weak. Come again. We have two missiles incoming to the Arklov base. They have chemical warheads. If you are there, get out. This could be a good That's not. Remember, 
Price warned her when the missiles were, were taking off. So either his message was delayed so badly that it happened to arrive at the same time the missiles landed, or those are some really fast fucking missiles. Both options are so hilarious to me. Like he calls her and they repeat the same call when the missiles are taking off and they immediately explode. They, they just shut up. How'd they get there? It's credit, credit, whew, credit where credit is due. This is one of those running segments, you know, that you do in Call of Duty. And it's actually kind of cool. You know, seeing the gas hit everyone, it's pretty harrowing and, and pretty gross, but it actually gives a good sense of urgency. So this whole part is actually a little bit neat. It's one of those few on rail segments. That's kind of nice. Oh, speaking of war crimes, it's time for our favorite moment. All right, so the airplane scene is a little different this time around. Uh, Makarov has people everywhere and they are taking over the plane in an attempt to do the same false flag operation as an MW2, but instead of the US, they're using Urzikstan. You play in the perspective of an old freedom fighter and you get this kind of creepy scene where one of the guys knows your family by name, but you're a baller and you beat his ass and shoot a bunch of people, which, you know, you do okay for yourself until you're flashbanged and taken hostage. You're given a bomb vest, a gun, and basically forced to blow up a plane. It's actually a pretty good scene. Are you a terrorist? No! You look like one. Help me! Give me the cell phone! Yeah, that was genuinely kind of grim. An interesting way to do it all. Neat twist that the gun you were given has no bullets in it either. So even if you wanted to shoot through the people and get the phone, you can't, it's okay. And then I remembered something. They opened the cabin door and the whole thing was depressurizing. But like five minutes ago, the entire cabin was flashbanged and had gunshots going off. So when they throw you back out there, they're just in their seats. It almost kind of tries to make you feel like they just now see the bomb vest like oh my god oh my god but we know they were just flashbanged the whole cabin so it's a little it's a little silly i'm sure they just threatened them or something but from a, a visual perspective it's kind of funny the next mission is playing as farah again and going to the crash site of the plane it is somehow despite it being a investigate the crash mission still an area war zone style mission this time you are searching various phones for videos and other information on what happened during the crash as well as the black box but I I promise you, this is not the highlight of the mission. The highlight is the weapons. What do you mean silenced crossbow? What do you mean by silenced? As opposed to what? The loudened crossbow? Anyway. The whole mission is to stop Makarov from getting data and controlling the narrative for his false flag operation, yada yada, same shit. But then... Does Makarov... Yeah, so I know you you really couldn't tell slightly zoomed in on his face while you were knowingly watching airport footage of what happened with Makarov's plan, but thank you for the commentary. The missions after this is a four year ago flashback to something more akin to the old MW2 no Russian mission, but instead of an airport, it's a stadium, and instead of being the terrorists, you are the relief. This mission is another one of the better ones because it's not another shitty war zone style mission, despite it hilarious variously taking place in Verdansk, but does really require a bit of aim and target acquisition between civilians and enemies. What's particularly funny, though, are how the civilians tend to run. Wait, guys, what were they running from? Wait. Why were they running down the stairs when the people shooting them were right here? I can't do this. You find Makarov and the rest of the mission is just a simple escort, but with the best meme that has been spawned from this game. You think press F to pay respects is special? How about V for Makarov? That's fucking right. You got the best prompt out there. V Makarov, press it. It's time for you to meet some friends, I'm 
Press V to Makarov. I love V for Makarov. The whole point of this mission is to just show a time where you had a hostage, but didn't kill him, but you should have killed him. They did this exact same thing in MW2 with Hassan and are just rehashing the whole thing like it's a filler episode in a TV show. Though you do see Ghost in his old MW2 outfit, which is a reference done right. That's good. Ooh, ooh, it's time. It's time, it's time. Without an army, you got nothing. Wrong again, boys. <laughs> fucking believable. So, you missed me? Well, technically, you did, didn't you? Last row. If you're tracking this, let's call an airstrike. Ghost, that is not nice. <laughs> God, it's so funny. Every time, it's so funny. Okay. So the next mission after this is called Oligarch, which is a pretty fitting name. You're after Ben Shapiro's sister and to see where all the money is coming from. This is one of those levels I actually do enjoy because it's a gigantic contemporary modern mansion that you fight through to get to the top. And for the most part, it's a solid level design. Plus there's drones as enemies, which is something other than armored guys. So I like that. And when you get there, it's, you know, not the worst cutscene out there. Give me your hand. Why? Or else you'll cut it off. Not my style. He might. Why the mask? To hide my face. I actually like that line. It's kind of funny with how dry it is. It's a good line. B plus. You get the info from her by threatening her with American student loan debt, and then you piss off. The next mission is getting one of Makarov's underlings and taking him with you for interrogation. And this is another one of those missions with surprisingly good level design. It's a massive building with multiple stories, tight corridors, and tons of verticality. It's pretty cool in terms of design and atmosphere, even if it, again, falls back to the same problem of dude with armor. Can I just say, they have used the same image of shirtless Makarov like 40 times. They keep using it every time he's mentioned in the briefings. It's like a running joke. I need to know how many times it's utilized. One Makarov. Makarov. This has got Makarov written all over it. Makarov, Makarov. Or someone. This is our shot of Makarov. Makarov. Is Makarov alive? Makarov. So after this, you ambush his convoy, grab a prisoner. Turns out the prisoner was General Shepard. Wow. And of course, he stern talks you for his life. I know Makarov's next target. You didn't even know you were the fucking target. Another good line. B plus. The next whole mission is Eggsville in the snow. It's a long one, and again, not terrible. A lot of the mission variety gets better in terms of location near the end of the game. It's got a lot of thermal site use in the snow, but it's absolutely ruined by the fact that the enemy snipers in the snow who are immune to thermal sites also have armor. So you have to land a headshot every single time to kill them or else they will just get hit and run away. It's really tedious. But joke's on you though, cause right after that, you do a whole solo mission with ghosts in a war zone map with area objectives disarming bombs to stop a dam from blowing up nice it's awful and let me just say we are now in the final three missions of the game that's right we are almost done with the whole game after the dam mission there is an ac-130 mission with graves that is easily the worst ac-130 mission out there the sound mixing is abysmally bad it's such a bizarre thing but you can barely hear what the people are saying And you don't get the super calm AC-130 operators, which is kind of like half of the mood. And, and it's biggest crime of them all, they replaced the 105 millimeter cannon with a guided TV missile. That's just not the same. How dare you replace the 105 millimeter? Affirmative. Crew, you were prepared to engage, but do not fire on the church. God damn. That and the sound it makes is the entire point of these damn missions. You promised me a cake and you delivered a gluten-free vegan one. You didn't lie, but holy ball stuck in a vacuum. Am I disappointed? There's a congressional hearing with congressperson and Shepard and Graves both lie under oath against each other, which is cool, I guess. And then you go out on a mission to disarm bombs in an underground metro in London. It's nothing but armored enemies, pure wave combat, a few juggernauts, and a small reading mini game. So like a pretty classic afternoon in the London tube. Oh, and Soap gets hit by a train and dies. Soap! Ah! Just kidding. He still dies though. Then Makarov gets away and you scatter Soap's ashes to the wind. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's that abrupt. It, it, it was a lot faster than I thought it would be.
I know I'm doing that whole thing where I say it abruptly for shock value, but that really is what happens. This is the end of the game. The game's over. Soap is shot in the head randomly by Makarov. He gets away, you scatter his ashes, and the game ends. Total runtime, three hours and change. Total time controlling a character, actually in control of a person, one hour and 58 minutes. I know, I have my editor check, and that includes the AC-130 mission. Oh, okay. How do I even begin with this? I mean, how do you start? When everything has gone wrong, which part do you attempt to fix first? It's just so shocking that we've reached a level of quality this low. For all the dislike of Call of Duty, for all of the rehatching, the sameness, the lack of creativity, it was still a game. It was still a product that had triple A qualities. Even if those qualities were mostly visual, there was still aspects of a high production value. This is a demotion. COD campaigns were normally between five to six hours long, sometimes ranging, also depending on how good you were the usual but those games were also mostly gameplay and see this started back in the black ops 2 era you know that's when they started adding a lot more cutscenes for the most part in order to tell an exciting story in call of duty it relied on set pieces music and just general spectacle because the games didn't have cutscenes it was entirely locked to the first person point of view so a lot of the good delivery had to be done via the debriefs and then let the action speak for itself the rest of Task Force 141 brought in the ACS, Alan. Two men took down an entire base. I ask much more from you now. All of these debriefs were heavy on the musical score, and also each mission tended to open with a really impressive sequence of sorts. I mean, the opening of this game wasn't terrible with the underwater section and everything, but comparing that Gulag mission in MW3 2023 versus the Gulag opening in MW2 2009? Oh, Fox 3, Fox 3. constant problem throughout the game is that it has no spectacle. The only time there's any real spectacle in this game is running away from the gas as Laswell, maybe. But here's the thing, and we talked about this a bit in the MW2 to 2022 review. People will say, well, they're trying to go for a more milsim approach, something a lot more grounded. And to that, I say that doesn't mean you can't have visual spectacle in your game. I'm not asking you to do the MW3 Eiffel Tower coming down crazy car chase thing. Mission intensity doesn't always mean all out action. The most memorable mission in the entirety of this trilogy is Clean House in 2019 because it was intense and visually impressive. It was tight, claustrophobic, and kept that realistic feeling. In Modern Warfare 2 Remake, it was the one where you're on the run from Graves as Soap after the betrayal because that's where you got that intense, outnumbered, claustrophobic, but character-centered mission. It was still a visual spectacle, even if it wasn't a crazy action movie one. If you're going to go for something more realistic, then what you're doing has to be at least interesting. But everything is so fucking boring. The characters are such milk toast, and it's strange because they were so much better in the prior games. That was the best part of the MW2 remake. The characters. Graves was a fantastic villain. Ghost and Soap's, like, bro team was the source of uh, many hilarious memes and fan fictions and all that stuff. And then you had others like Giga Chad Alejandro. Now, Graves is mostly absent. Ghost and Soap have no scenes together, no banter. Alejandro isn't even in this game. Farah is fucking dull. Laswell is dull. Price is even dull. They also, for some reason, speak like they have twice as much gravel in their throats as they used to. Our claws base and Castoria. To love to let him try, but we gotta get him out now. So you know names. Anyone can read a bloody dossier. What's the rest of your plan? I don't know what's up with that, but I feel like the VAs were told to speak more grungy and it comes off as comical. Combine that with the strange sounding Russian out of Ben Shapiro and his sister, and this there's no intrigue, there's no charisma, there's nothing to any of these characters, which you can have. You can have dull, flat, boring characters if the game has the right gameplay to 
put them in the right tone the right music the right act oh my god music music there's no music that's not true there's one single moment in the campaign where there's music and it's during a cut scene and it's fine Roger that. Let's fly. We got music, yay! It's just insane to me because music is such an important part of every narrative game. I mean, honestly, but especially the original MW trilogy. One of the most vivid moments where music is used amazingly is when Price and Makarov are talking in the mission Enemy of My Enemy. I know you can hear me on this channel, Makarov. You and I both know you won't last a week. And neither will you. Makarov, you ever hear the old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Christ, one day you're going to find that cuts both ways. Shepard is using Site Hotel Bravo. You know where it is. I'll see you now. Looking forward to it. Give my regards to Zakay if you get there first. Think about it. There's no insane over-the-top set pieces here. No crazy first-person moments. Just a strong story beat, good dialogue, good mission setting, and great music. And on the topic of runtime, short video games aren't inherently bad. I can think of many games that were just way too long they should have been. Most Assassin's Creed titles. But one of the best FPS campaigns ever is Titanfall 2. And that's about four hours long. Of course, Titanfall 2 also is made much like old COD games, where there are almost zero cutscenes and and everything is done in the first person perspective. It's four hours, but those four hours are almost entirely in the hands of the player. Three hours is bad. Under two hours in the hands of the player is downright criminal. It also doesn't give them any time to tell this serious story they want to. You can make an action romp with less time, unless you're John Wick, which is getting way too long for my taste. But normally it's the slow, serious movies that are three hours long and the fun action movies that are one and a half or two hours. But the fact that you can beat this entire campaign that tries to be slower and serious without speedrunning it at a gradual pace before the runtime of John Wick 4 is even over speaks volumes to how half-baked this product is. And let's talk about Soap's death real quick. Because comparing it to his death in Modern Warfare 3 is a real difficult one. Like, Soap was heavily wounded at the end of MW2, which was part of the whole cliffhanger ending and also was taken to be patched up at the beginning of MW3. So he gets fixed up and survives about two-thirds of the campaign until one specific mission. Yuri, my friend. You never should have gone here. What the hell is he talking about? Get out now! This entire mission is supporting Soap, getting him out there and protecting him to bring him to a space where you can help fix him up. Notice how unlike Price in the remake, who goes out and is brought back up immediately, there is an entire mission of tension. And this tension is incredible too, because he was already injured, so you somewhat don't expect him to get hurt again. But when he does, it feels a lot more serious. And they spend the entire mission building up the possibility of him dying, because obviously he's bleeding out. So the longer the mission goes, the lower his chance of survival is. So it really creates stakes that come to head in the end. Not now, son. Just rest. Get a medic! Come on, stay with me, son. Nice. No. It's strong, emotional, it's shocking, and it creates a pretty good meme template. Hey, you, you're finally awake. There's just so much weight in Soap's death, and his death in the remake has no emotional setup, no prep for it, no tension, no final moment. Just gun to the head and gone. And again, people will say this is the realistic version because people just get shot, 
and they're gone. Hey, so how's the war going for you guys? I can't wait to go back home and see my mom. <laughs> but I will say, I don't care. This is Call of Duty. Just because it's realistic does not make it narratively satisfying. Especially when they cut after that to them spreading the ashes and Ghost- And G Ghost still has his mask on! You couldn't take it off for the funeral?! What? Some ghost mask grabbing scene is enough for you to take it off in the prior game? But you won't take it off during Soap's funeral?! My god! Just the, just the thought of Ghost standing in the background like a PNG in the OG MW3. No, Soap! You didn't shoot you on that bike! If someone goes out realistically, it doesn't make it narratively satisfying. You can have- you can have both. You can have both. You can have someone die in a realistic fashion without some massive sacrifice or crazy heartfelt thing. People can just die. And it can still be narratively impressive. This is not. It simply is not. Oh, I totally forgot. Shepard's dead too. Yeah, Price shoots him in his office. Do you know when this happens? Do you know when one of the main villains kinda sorta dies? Oh, it's in the post credit scene for this game. It's not even in the game. It's in the post credit scene. Holy shit. Modern Warfare 4 coming out. I was never in that office. This soap walks up and say, like, Oi, mate. I was never in that tunnel. Everyone's gonna have- I was- I was never- Oh, I, I was never in that tank. I think what really upsets me more than anything is just the potential that's been squandered here. Modern Warfare 2019 was a really tight, solid shooter that didn't do much in terms of character development, but did do a lot for the more grounded narrative. Modern Warfare 2 to 2022 wasn't as grounded, and its narrative was sloppier, but it did a lot for its character development. Graves, Shepard, Ghost, Soap, Alejandro, Hell, even Laswell got some character development, and it really made you more invested in all of them, despite the game playing it extremely safe and killing off nobody. This was your final act of this trilogy. At least I assumed it was. However, they stated this to be a DLC and basically just continue the story a little bit while waiting for another fully fledged COD release to come later. All the hallmarks of this being a DLC repackage of a full game are there. The short run time, the bizarre sequences, the lack of any narrative fulfillment. It's clearly a stretched out DLC masquerading as a full game. But I will review it as a full game because it costs 70 fucking dollars. But what really hurts, what really sinks the knife the deepest, Shepard, is that there was so much they could have done. Like, Makarov is woefully underdeveloped and doesn't even compare to his OG counterpart. The missions, when they show signs of being good, like the estate and the high rise, are actually rather well made. But because they had no time to truly make this into a game, it's mostly all repackaged Warzone crap. There's no setup or payoff to Soap's death. And what's even worse is that what well, could have been done instead. I had a whole schizo rant about it. You know what I pitch would be for a fucking COD game right now? Imagine MW3 2023 has already happened. Ghost, extremely fucking upset with Soap's death, goes a little wacko. He goes off the grid, AWOL, starts handling shit on his own, starts getting a little bit more and more devious with how he handles shit. Next thing you know, you're playing as Gaz and Price, and you have to take down Ghost, because Ghost is getting really off the books right now. And then Ghost is actually now your main villain. He goes out full on Rambo, full Jason Bourne, and then the entire time you're playing the game, you're a brand new character. Your name is Folk, and, and your character is everything normal and all that kind of stuff. Like, like a regular playable character, but then at the at the second act low point of the game, it turns out your character the entire time was Ghost, just unmasked. So in reality, you knew what Ghost looked like the whole time. He was just your character, but because you never knew what Ghost looked like, you could never figure out that you were actually playing as him the whole time. So when it's revealed, you're like, holy fuck, how would I have known it was me i've never seen ghosts unmasked but it was him the whole time and then that's the twist and you like kill gaz or something or whatever the fuck because you're actually undercover and then ghost is the full villain again call of duty modern for warfare 4 ghosting time And then Ghost has sex with Price. Despite my weird rants and all the jokes, like, I know it's just, you know, I'm armchair developing right now, but I think back to the OG MW3, I think back to the final mission and the narrative strength it had and what that scene does 
for a character's death. It's so much stronger. Get ready. This is for soap. So, is this the worst Call of Duty campaign of all time? I think it is, but let's go down the list. Let's go down the list. Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3, the early Call of Duties. They're a bit dated, sure, but not terrible. It's a little hard to judge those due to the time frame, but I remember them being decent, so I'm going to say no. Call of Duty 4, no way in hell. World at War, absolutely not. MW2, same. Incredible stuff. Black Ops 1, loved that one. Reznov story, super underrated. Modern Warfare 3, just replayed it actually. Not quite as good as MW2, and I'd actually say that Modern Warfare Remastered 2019 might actually be better than the original MW3, but it's still decent, you know? Uh, Sandman, my beloved. Black Ops 2, this is where we start getting a lot more cutscenes in our games, but I must say Black Ops 2 has one of the best campaigns. Raul Menendez is one of the best villains in COD history. Ghosts, this one isn't great, I admit. I don't love the ghost campaign, but it's still got its moments. Some of the scenes really hit and the spectacle is still fully there in spades. Advanced Warfare. Uh, we're moving into the movement ones now. AW is okay. Kevin Spacey is kind of fun. And the enemy variety is neat also. It's not the best, but it's not bad. Also, it gave us the F to pay respects meme. Black Ops 3. This is one of those ones that people will disagree on. Black Ops 3 isn't great, but I think the general gameplay of it beats out the weirdo Jacob's Ladder storyline they did. The overall gameplay systems of the game is fun to play. There's better enemy variety, better gadgets. It plays well. It's colorful. It looks good. For the most part, despite the story being total nonsensical, like just random random crap. I actually do like Black Ops 3 sometimes for its gameplay parts. Also, the ending is really good. It has one of the solid final missions where you're going around the destroyed areas and all the people keep turning into crows when you shoot them. It's kind of cool. Infinite Warfare. People who hate this campaign either have never played it or hate when Call of Duty is in space and they take their anger out on it. IW is a top five campaign. To me, it's in the top three. It's incredible. Call of Duty World War II. I don't like this one. It's very dull and it's very boring, but the missions still play better than MW3 and it isn't made up of reused Warzone maps. Black Ops 4 doesn't have one, so we skip that. I guess you could say that's the worst one, but eh. Cold War is kind of fun. Uh, there's some neat branching paths and it brings me back to the Black Ops 1 days. You know, it's not quite as good, but I still kind of like Cold War. I think it's better than people give it credit for. Then there's Vanguard. That one's a bit shit. Uh, I think truly this conversation comes down to MW3 Remastered, World War II, Vanguard, and for some people, Black Ops 3, but I, I think it's better. So it really, for me, is down to World War II and Vanguard. And at the end of the day, while I don't like either of those campaigns either, they're both campaigns. They have a narrative that's not completely nonsensical. Their missions are not rehashed war zone maps. And there is at least a little bit of spectacle, even if it's like the ridiculous train scene, that's just really stupid, but it still is like a game. It still was a game that was made and not a DLC underbaked and shit out. So yes, I can absolutely say that I think this is the newest low for the series. It's genuinely shocking we have gone this far. I know some will say that I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. I genuinely am. There's bad, and then there's this. It's $70, 250 gigabytes for half a game. I cannot fathom where we go from here. I don't know what we do now, but if I had to guess, COD is gonna go where it always wanted to go, into the live service genre permanently. Activision has always been clear that they think sequels make more money than the live service model. That's why Overwatch 2 happened. Now that they have been bought out by Microsoft, Bobby Kotick couldn't resist selling us one more piece of shit. Signed in his handwriting and sealed with the horns of the devil. In a hilarious way, I actually have higher hopes for the next COD campaign. I genuinely think that it can't get worse than this. So whatever they give us must be better. I look forward to talking about it with you when it arrives. But until then, Call of Duty feels like it's well and truly dead. And its corpse is being reanimated by the puppet master named Warzone. 
Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry it's such a negative review, but holy shit, this game. You want to buy some merchandise? Orchidate.com. Link in the description. Code V for 15% off. It'll be live for two weeks. Oh my god. What a- oh my god, what a game. I gotta get out of here. I feel like I talked about Modern Warfare 3. I spent more time writing the script and filming this than the campaign took! Come on. Obviously you're a skater.